there's some new evidence on breaking a fast. Yep, that's one thing that I talk about quite frequently is what to break your fast with. Should you eat this? Should you not eat that? Well, this is less about what exactly you should eat and more about some important things that you should be paying attention to. So some recent science has really brought to light what we need to be paying attention to when it comes down to breaking our fast as far as our specific hormones are concerned, particularly in the world of cortisol. Now, we know of cortisol as this bad hormone, but in reality, it's actually quite good for us during a fast. We just don't want it elevated while we break a fast. So we have to apply some specific measures to get our cortisol levels a little bit lower. And I'm gonna explain how exactly this works. Hey, we've got new videos coming out almost every single day these days, okay? Like 7.30 a.m. Pacific time, we got new videos coming out. So make sure you're keeping it locked here and always paying attention. There's a red icon for you to go ahead and subscribe, and then there's a bell icon for you to turn on notifications so you never, ever miss a beat. Also, after you watch this video, I want you to go check out Super Fat. So these guys are really interesting. They've put together some pretty interesting nut butter packets, and it's not like the normal nut butter packets you see. Okay, these guys have combined MCT, they've combined coffee, they've combined probiotics, macadamia nuts. They've really put it all together in a really interesting way. Okay, not only does the stuff taste awesome, but it's really good to have after you've been fasting if you want something that's kind of easy on the gut, or you just want something that's gonna fill you up and make it so you don't binge after your fast. So be sure to check them out down in the description, but make sure you watch this video first, and then you might have something a little bit more applicable as well. All right, so what we have found now recently is that while we are fasting, cortisol levels are high. Okay, but they're not high chronically. They're high in pulses, meaning our morning pulse of cortisol might be a little bit bigger, or our afternoon pulse of cortisol might be bigger, but they don't stay elevated throughout the whole time. So what we have to understand is the relationship between cortisol and insulin. Okay, here's where everything is gonna be broken down for you. When we eat food, our insulin is spiked. No matter what we eat, we have a little insulin spike, whether we eat carbohydrates, proteins, or fats. Our insulin is spiked, okay? Cortisol is only going to cause us to store fat when it's combined with insulin. So let me explain it like this. If you have chronically high levels of cortisol because you're chronically stressed, you're only gaining fat during the times that you're stressed and eating, okay? If you're stressed during a fast and your cortisol levels are high, it doesn't cause you to gain fat. It doesn't magically just pull fat from other places and make you deposit it in your belly. No, in fact, cortisol helps you burn fat. Cortisol turns on fat burning hormones. It turns on hormone sensitive lipase. So during a fast, spikes in cortisol are very high, but the moment that we eat, we don't want cortisol to be high. So when we break our fast, we somehow have to get our cortisol levels lower before we eat and spike our insulin. Because remember, cortisol high plus insulin high equals fat accumulation, specifically in the belly. Insulin being a little bit high without cortisol being high isn't nearly as bad, okay? So what we have to do is find a way to get our cortisol levels low. So first off, you can relax a lot, try to get your stress levels nice and low, but when you're fasting, it's gonna be hard to have that happen anyway. You're already physiologically stressed. So what I have figured out is in the couple of hours leading up to breaking a fast, try to consume a little bit of cinnamon in your water. Start adding, this is new stuff, this is stuff that I'm learning. So adding a little bit of cinnamon to your water or consuming some tea that has cinnamon in it is going to help you out a lot. Here's why, cinnamon acts like insulin in the body. Okay, so what it does is it triggers the cells to open up in the same way that food would. When we eat food, insulin spikes and it tells the cell to open up. That's the job of insulin. Okay, we eat, insulin spikes, it knocks on the cell door and says, hey cell, food's here, open up. It's like, it's like the bellboy, okay? So what happens is cinnamon is a bellboy, but not an official bellboy. So it doesn't actually have anything to do with insulin. So if we have a little bit of cinnamon, it makes it so the excess blood sugar that is in our body gets into the cell and it can drive our cortisol levels a little bit lower. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna add some extra salt towards the end of your fast. And this isn't just to keep you minerally balanced. No, cortisol has a direct relationship with salt. So if our salt increases for a little bit, our body backs off production of what's called aldosterone. Okay, that slowing down of aldosterone, ultimately, I'm over, oversimplifying this, but basically what it does is it makes it so cortisol levels do get a little bit lower. Now, what's really important about breaking your fast is no matter what, try to break your fast with just some lean protein. Okay, what's gonna happen is lean protein doesn't have as big of an insulin spike. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Physiology and Behavior that found that when you eat food that has carbohydrates in it or a higher amount of carbohydrates, you have a big cortisol spike compared to when you eat higher protein or higher fat. 
So what we need to do is we need to eat foods that suppress cortisol or make it so that cortisol doesn't go higher. Okay, if we eat carbs when we break a fast, no matter how clean those carbs are, it can bring cortisol levels a little bit higher in conjunction with that insulin. So we have to eat a small lean protein meal first so that our cortisol levels come down and we don't have a big spike in insulin. So by tag teaming and doing that together, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of protein when we do break our fast, that makes it so that cortisol levels go down, but also at the same time makes it so that, of course, the cinnamon's bringing the blood sugar down and bringing the insulin levels down. So it's just a simple thing. It's something that I've learned recently and something that I wanted to share so that you could apply it to your fasting. Okay, remember, there's full breakdowns on what you can do to break a fast and all this stuff, and I've done other videos on those, and you can see those all over my channel, but this is something new, and hopefully it gives you a quick breakdown of how you can break your fast based on some new emerging science. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.